Well, as we begin the season of Advent, we're going to pause our study of the Gospel of Mark, but we'll pick it up in the new year, so don't worry, I'll, I'll finish it. All right, but we're going to be looking at uh, several uh, promises that we hold on to during the Advent season about the coming of Christ and his, uh, his birth and then his death, his resurrection, and ultimately our hope, which is his return. And so as we go through the Advent season, the, the theme is gather around. And right, we, we gather together, we get friends and family together. It starts with Thanksgiving and it kind of turns into a million and one parties until the new year. And we're all gathered together and celebrating and having fun and rejoicing at the wonderful things that God has given to us. And so today we're, we're thinking about the theme because of what Isaiah says in chapter 11 about gathering around the tree. So how many of you already have a Christmas tree up in your home? Who's ahead of the game? All right. How many of you don't yet, but it's like later today or this week or maybe January, right? You'll get to it when you get to it, All right? So growing up, the, the gathering on the Christmas tree and putting the Christmas tree up was a huge deal in my family. My family growing up didn't do artificial trees and so we would take the whole family out and, and go and pick a tree out and then my brother and I would fight over which one we should get and that was probably not what my mom wanted out of the event but that's what we did. And then we would saw it off and, and go on this little truck ride and take it home. And then we would begin to decorate it, but we had to do it as a big thing, and it had to be right after Thanksgiving. We had this very strict rule in our house. Not a single Christmas song, hymn, or decoration could be out until after Thanksgiving, which meant the day after Thanksgiving, we woke up immediately and put all of it out, <laughs> okay, like the whole day. But the family would get together, and it would be this wonderful celebration of decorating it. And seeing a beautifully decorated Christmas tree brings a lot of joy, it brings a reminder of, of celebration and, and light in the darkness and all the wonders and beautiful message of Christmas. But as we begin the Advent season, um, the, these candles up here symbolize uh, different themes and the, the first theme is hope. And, and hope is a beautiful but tricky thing. In the psalm that we read today, in the psalm of the day, it says, all day long I wait for the Lord. In the Hebrew Old Testament, the word wait and hope are the same word. Because a lot of times when we're hoping for God to change something, for, for God to come back, that's what we're waiting for for the, the second advent, we are also waiting. And how many of you have gotten tired of waiting at some point in your life? Right? As we're talking about Christmas. As, as a kid, it's my favorite holiday. I couldn't wait to start putting up the decorations. And I couldn't wait to start seeing presents under the tree so I could secretly try to open them and, and figure out what I was going to get. That's not good, but I did it. All right? <laughs> and then my mom had to start hiding them in the closet. All right? So waiting can be difficult. We're, we're hoping, right? We're trusting in these promises. There's this beautiful hope in what God will do because of what God has done. But sometimes we're waiting. And it's, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to wait and sometimes it's hard to hope, right? Sometimes we feel hopeless in the world that that, that situation, that that relationship, that that circumstance aren't getting better and we don't know when they will. And so as we get ready for all of the rejoicing and celebrating and the hope of Advent and Christmas, I also want to deal with the reality that because of sin and, and hurt and wounds in the world, sometimes it's, it's hard to gather around the Christmas tree and, and feel all the joy and happiness that we're supposed to. I remember one time as we were helping our mother uh, put the Christmas tree up and how many of you have experienced the, when little kids want to help? Anybody experienced that? <laughs> yeah, little kids, I want to help mom or dad. And mom and dad or grandma and grandpa are like, oh, okay. And you as an adult know that it's more interfering 
then it is helpful. Anybody been through that, right? So that's what my brother and I were like for our mom, trying to put the Christmas tree up and everything. And my mom had this beautiful angel that went on top of the tree. And it was very expensive and it was made out of porcelain and it had lights in it and it glowed. It was absolutely stunning. And one year, um, because my parents had divorced, my brother being the older brother wanted to be the man of the house. He wanted to help my mom put the angel on top of the Christmas tree. Doesn't that sound precious and beautiful, right? Sounds wonderful. So he got on a ladder and speaking of waiting, my mom told him, wait until I get back into the room so I can help you, because she had to leave the room. My brother, like me, didn't want to wait for Christmas joy. So he climbed up the ladder at the old age of seven years old and didn't wait for mom's help, and he reached out with the angel topper, and he lost his balance and fell and he grabbed onto the tree to not fall and ripped the whole tree with all of its ornaments and tinsels down and crashed on the angel topper and broke it. I know, we all felt bad for him. I laughed, but because I wasn't the one getting in trouble. <laughs> That's what little brothers are for. But it gives us these two pictures of, of what life can feel like, right? There's this, we're gathering around, we are celebrating, we are rejoicing at what our God has done and, and hoping for what he will do. And sometimes it feels like the Christmas tree and all the beauty is crashing down around us and, and we feel hopeless. We're, we're tired of waiting. We're tired of hope and we just want the promise to be here. And in, in Isaiah chapter 11, as the prophet is speaking, He's speaking in the midst of people that have just had their, their Christmas tree and joy, so to speak, come crashing down all around them. They are besieged by the Assyrian army and they are being under attack and their whole world is falling apart and it looks like they're going to be defeated and destroyed. And in the midst of all of that darkness, God gives some wonderful promises that we read during Advent, during the Christmas season. And in chapter 11, he talks about a new king, a new king that will rise up and give us a better world. Now, how many of you would like to see a better world? Right? It's, it's pretty easy to look around and go, hey, there's Christmas joy, there's Christmas hope, it's a wonderful time of year and to also see all kinds of hurt and aching and brokenness and evil in the world. To where we can go, I'm hopeful for what God will do, but it'd be nice if we didn't have to wait so long. But here's one of the beautiful things about Advent and Christmas. It's a reminder that God keeps his promises and that God gives and keeps his promises in the middle of the mess and the darkness of this life. That when we're gathered around and sometimes everybody's happy and it's a beautiful celebration and the Christmas tree looks amazing. And other times life feels like it just came crashing down and everything broke. And so here are some of the promises. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. So we have this promise that, okay, God is telling people, look, because of your sin, because of the brokenness of the world, you're going to have some problems. There's going to be some brokenness and hurt. And so instead of Israel, the people of God, being this vibrant, beautiful tree, they're going to get taken down to nothing but a stump, which in their eyes would say, well, life is hopeless now. When we, we, were, we were this vibrant, beautiful tree that God had turned us into, and now we're just nothing but a stump. Right? And I don't know if you've ever seen a tree cut all the way down to the stump. It, like, it doesn't bloom back, right? And so if you're the people of God at this time, you're looking around and going, well, how much worse could it get? I mean, wh where's the light? Where is the hope? And God's word says, here is your hope that from this stump that looks like there's no life, that looks like there's no future, 
There's going to be a shoot. There's going to be a branch. And from his roots shall bear fruit. Meaning he's going to spring out where there only looked like death. He's going to spring forth in life. And he's going to grow even more roots and more branches. And he's going to produce, he's going to make life for more and more people. And see, this is our Advent hope. Now, the waiting is difficult, it's frustrating, it's painful. Sometimes it's hard to hold on to when it feels like everything's falling apart, it's broken, or you're looking at your life, and you're like, yeah, it feels like a tree stump, and <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know when it's going to grow back. Same for the people of God in the day of Isaiah. Hey, we've been brought low. There's sin and brokenness in the world, and it, and it feels like there's no life here. There's no hope here. And God defiantly speaks into the darkness with this beautiful promise that says, don't worry, I'm going to bring forth a shoot. And I'm not just going to regrow this tree. I'm going to make it even bigger and better. I'm going to give you a better and new life where only before there was darkness and death. And then in these promises, it describes what this king ultimately will look like. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, here's why that is so important. Because the reason the people of Israel eventually get brought down so low to just being the stump of Jesse instead of the tree of Jesse like they were supposed to is because they had evil and wicked kings and priests who didn't listen to the word of God and didn't have the spirit of the Lord upon them because they had rejected God. And now God is saying, I'm going to make you a a better promise. I'm not just going to bring you a new king and he's going to kind of be a little bit better. No, he's going to be a a totally different king where the, the spirit rests upon him and guides him and leads him and he faithfully follows me and leads you to follow me. And he goes on to describe it, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. So he's describing the, the desires and the priority of this king. And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see God keeping this promise. One of the first things Jesus says when he begins his ministry is that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that when we see the life of Jesus as we have through the gospel of Mark, we see that he is led by the Holy Spirit and his whole desire is to see God's kingdom come, to see all the healing happen, to see sickness and death and pain go away. Now, we live on the other side of it. So we look at it, we go, yeah, that's beautiful, right? Jesus is awesome. (laughs) But if you're Isaiah's day, how many of you would be like, that sounds like a wonderful promise. When might that happen? According to history, about 700 years. So how many of you have waited a long time for something? Anybody? (laughs) And got really frustrated and down about it. And it wasn't 700 years, but we have this expression, oh, this is going to take forever. We know it doesn't, (laughs) but we say it, it feels like it, right? And this is why we, in Advent, not only look forward to God keeping his promises, and Jesus returning to to fulfill everything holy and to heal all the darkness and the brokenness and the sin in the world. But we also look back to see that God made a promise and then 700 years later in Jesus, he kept that promise to bring new life where there was only death, to bring light where there was darkness and to produce fruit, meaning he's bringing more and more people into his kingdom. But his plan took 700 years. How many of you are like, oh, I can't wait to wait 700 years for like anything? (laughs) And you're like, I don't want to be around for 700 years. Okay. But we look back, we go, oh, God 
made a promise to his people when they were hurting, when they were broken, when things were falling apart, and they were going, where is the hope? And God spoke words of hope and comfort to them. And then God kept that promise of hope and comfort in Jesus. So what that does for you and me as we wait for Jesus to ultimately heal everything and to give us eternal life is that we are sustained by these promises. We can look at it and say, yeah, it feels like life is just like a tree stump right now, not what it should be. It feels like things have just come crashing down and they're not as beautiful and and joyful as they were supposed to be. But I still have hope in the middle of all this mess and chaos because my God has kept his promises throughout history and I know he's gonna keep his promises in the future. At the end, it says, in that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire and his resting place shall be glorious. So as we look to Jesus for a hope, as we gather round the Christmas tree, the ultimate tree of our hope is the resting place of Jesus. When he's on the cross and he cries out, it is finished, and he gives up his spirit, and he breathes his last. And he does it in order to forgive your sins in order for you to know without a doubt that God loves you and that God redeems you and forgives you. And that through his death and his resurrection that you have eternal life. So yeah, I don't know a single person that enjoys waiting. Now some people are better at it than others. Some of us are impatient and we want things now. But in the middle of the waiting and the hoping, we have comfort and we have a real life hope. And the reason we have that is because we can continually look at the Christmas tree, the glorious resting place of our Savior King Jesus and look to him on the cross and go, I know he forgives me, I know he redeems me, I know he loves me, I know he's gonna come back and heal all things. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you are a God who speaks words of hope and comfort to us in the midst of pain and suffering and sorrow. We give thanks that you are a God who keeps your promises. As we look to the past to see what you have done for us on the cross, may it give us hope and comfort for the future, knowing that you will keep your promises to heal all things and to redeem us and give us eternal life. In your name we pray, amen.